Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. It's the next day and we're cracking on with this build. Now I did a few things off camera. I measured up the holes for the other pass-throughs on the mid plate. I flushed out the radiators and I aligned the rads up with all of the screws in into their final positions. So yeah, let's uh, get into it and uh, try and get this finished. Obviously there's gonna be like an assembly and build video in a third video, but this one is basically just gonna be finishing off all of the prep and all the loop. So yeah, let's get into it. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. This video series is proudly brought to you by Thermaltake and their new high capacity tough RAM RGB DDR4 RAM. Featuring Hynix ADI 2GB memory chips with module capacities up to 32 gigs per stick and available in 64 gigabyte kits. Perfect for memory intensive applications like content creation and for overclocking. It features full RGB lighting support for ASUS AuraSync, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, ASRock Polychrome Sync, and MSI Mystic Light. Tough RAM RGB also comes with a comprehensive limited lifetime warranty for each Tough RAM RGB kit. For more information on Thermaltake's Tough RAM RGB, check out the link in the video description. As I mentioned in the intro, there's not that much more to do to get this up and running, but it's, it's more time consuming and getting things right. So like I mentioned, Got to drill some more holes, uh, put the other pass-through fittings in, and then what I've got to do is actually drill out the fascia plate so all of the pass-throughs align. I actually planned out some other stuff off camera as well. I uh, planned out where the fill port and the drain is going to be as well. I didn't show that in the last video because I hadn't decided how I was quite going to do that yet, but I spent all morning umming and ahhing and doing that thing where you just stare at it going, what am I doing? Like, how am I gonna make this work? But I figured it out. So let's, uh, I guess, pull out the mid plate and start drilling some holes.
All right, well, all of the modding now for the Meshify 2 XL is complete. The next step will be to install all of the components. But before I do that in the next part of this series, I'm gonna whip around and show you everything that I did just so it makes a little bit more sense for people who might not have been following along the whole time with all of the little nuances and stuff. And there's also a bunch of stuff that I didn't film that I also did modification wise as well, just like cutting small things here and there. Okay, so let's start off with the pump rose combo in the basement. As I mentioned in part one, I wanted to have most of the water cooling components hidden while well, as as much of all of like the pumps and stuff hidden. So what I did is I put a flat pump rose combo from EK in the basement and it's covered by this panel. So if I need to check anything at any time, check the flow, check anything, I can literally pop that panel off and see what's going on. Also when I'm feeling it, I'll obviously have this panel off so I can see the res getting filled up. So I uh, that actually turned out a lot nicer than I thought it was gonna turn out. And that's, that's good, right? It's good when those things happen. Moving up to the manifold, this is where all of the components that are getting water cooled actually hook into. So the smaller ones are for the GPUs and the larger ones are for the CPU. And as you can see, the pass-through fittings go through this mid plate and this plastic fascia to hide most of the tubes and connectors and fittings on the back, which we're gonna whip around in a sec and I'm gonna show you all of that as well. The flow direction goes from the pump up to this fitting here, and then it obviously goes into the components, and then the return line feeds from the components back into the manifold. It goes out of the manifold around the back side, which I'll show in a moment, into the front rad, and the front is the 420 mil rad, and then it's connected in series to the thick 360 up the top, and then it goes through the 360, and then it comes back around and goes through another pass through where we've got the fill port connected back down the back side, back into the pump res. So quite a simple loop design, but a little bit tricky to execute, but we got there in the end. Because I wanted this to be as close as possible to have all the components installed, I installed the additional fans. There's seven fans in total in this system. There's six on the rads and there is one 140 mil VADA silent fan on the rear of the case as well. And as you can see, there's no RGB going on. That's the point of it. There's not supposed to be any over the top RGB in this system. Now to all the fun stuff on the back side, and I mentioned the flow direction, but now I can show you from the other side. So it comes out of the pump res down here. There's a drain at the lowest part of the loop. So if I need to do any type of maintenance, I can do that without any problem. It's a little tap from EK. It goes up into the manifold. It comes out of the manifold at the top here, goes around into that rad. It goes through all the rads and returns here and comes back down into the pump res combo in the basement. And this was the whole idea, to have all of the, let's call it the ugly tubing and fittings on the backside, and this to really be a case with integrated water cooling, and like it's modded to be that way, so if I need to change a motherboard or change anything, it's gonna be easy and I don't need to undo any of the water cooling. The Keynote people out there would have noticed that I've added all of these Velcro straps for cable management. I'm kind of just preparing. I'm really excited for this PC, guys. I'm sorry if it doesn't really excite you, but yeah, I'm very, very keen for it. I have tested the back panel. The back panel goes on no problems. It, there's, it doesn't bow out or anything like that. The water cooling fittings do not touch it, which is actually a good thing. I also had to modify this. This is like the basement cover. I dremeled it off and just cut it because it doesn't actually clear with this fitting here. But yeah, it's no problem. I just cut it off just to hide the cables. Velcro everywhere. It's basically ready to go. The next thing I'll do in the next part is obviously construct the whole system. And that will be the final part of this little mini series where we put together my dream water cooled editing workstation. All right, ladies and gents, that's gonna do it for the second part in this little build series. I'm sorry, guys, like if you're not excited about this, I'm gonna apologize because I'm super keen for this. This is my dream editing workstation. And the great thing about this is if I decide to upgrade the hardware later, it's gonna be really, really easy. And the whole idea of using a case like this is I won't need to change the case for many years. The only thing I'll need to do 
is really keep an eye on the water cooling components and just make sure everything is running nicely. But changing out motherboards and CPUs and GPUs now and having it custom water cooled is gonna be pretty, uh, pretty easy. Let's just cross our fingers and hope it all works. And if you guys like the music, uh, yeah, I make all the music, it's available on Patreon. If you wanna get early access to videos like this series, it's available nice and early over on Floatplane. Now, as far as all of the water cooling components, there is a lot of weird fittings and stuff. So I'm not gonna make a list of all of that because it's just gonna be a bit too confusing and yeah, uh, this is basically to give you an idea of what to do. And because I've taken my time and I haven't just time lapsed it like I usually would, it might actually help you understand how this works. Anyways, guys, uh, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and I can't wait to finish this. I'm properly excited for this. And in the next part, we're gonna assemble it. And for me, that's tomorrow. But for you, it's probably going to be like a week or two weeks or something. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying this different series. We don't usually do series like this, but yeah, it's fun for me. Thanks for watching.